South Goa. Part of Goa that has a lot of hidden gems waiting to be discovered. If you ask a Goa regular whether he or she likes North Goa or South Goa, there is 90% probability that they will say South Goa. In fact, people who visit South Goa are the ones who want to see something new, experience the authentic part of Goa or just have a relaxed time away from the crowd. In today's video, we will be covering such 10 hidden gems of Goa that you must visit. Hey guys, welcome back to Sakri Cubes and this is Sagar. This is the third video of my Goa series. If you haven't watched my previous videos, then do watch it after this video. We have covered a lot of details including how to reach Goa, places to stay, where to eat, what to see and the total budget in those videos. The links to the videos would be provided in the description box below. In today's video, we will concentrate only on South Goa. Let's jump into our list of top 10 places to visit in South Goa. Kola Beach is probably the most beautiful beach you can visit in Goa. Reaching Kola Beach is a little challenging task. The roads leading to the beach is not in good condition. Especially the last 1 km stretch is quite an effort. You can cover it on a two-wheeler with good riding skills or if you have got an SUV then you can drive it all the way to the last point. Otherwise you will have to park your vehicle and walk for around 20 to 30 minutes to reach the beach. Because Kola Beach is unknown to a lot of people and since it is quite difficult to reach this beach, you can expect less crowd here. The beach is undoubtedly one of the best beaches in Goa. It is very calm and peaceful. The major attraction of Kola Beach is its lagoons. You can find freshwater streams surrounded by tall coconut trees on either side. Kayaking in the shallow water is a popular activity here. I definitely recommend you to try kayaking here. The food and stay options at Kola Beach is limited. If you are visiting it in the off season like in summers or monsoon, then they may even be closed. So carry food and water accordingly. The best beach in Goa is the one which you visit accidentally. That's how we discovered this gem called Kabadrama Beach. We were going to Kabadrama Fort and due to navigation error, we ended up at Kabadrama Beach. When we had a look at the beach from the cliff, we were awestruck by its beauty. The blue ocean and the surrounding greenery made us speechless. The Kabodrama beach has lagoons just like Kola beach. The water in the lagoon is crystal clear and we saw hundreds if not thousands of black sea shells. We were lucky to be the only ones here when we arrived. The beach was very clean and the perfect spot to get into the water as well. There is a very popular restaurant called the Cape Goa on this beach. We had lunch here and totally loved this place. The food, ambience and views were incredible. Butterfly Beach is a tiny little beach situated between Agonda and Palolem. This is a remote beach and there are only two ways to reach it. You can either take a boat ride or do a short trekking to reach this beach. Taking a boat ride is the easiest way to reach Butterfly Beach. You will get boats from Palolem Beach, Agonda Beach and Patnem Beach. And the cost of the boat ride can range between 500 rupees to 700 rupees per person depending on your bargaining skills. If you are feeling little adventurous, then you can also do kayaking all the way from Palolem Beach to Butterfly Beach. It is a 3 km stretch and kayaking in open ocean is going to be a crazy experience. If you are choosing the second option which is hiking, then you will have to hike anywhere between 30 minutes to 60 minutes depending on whether you are on a 2 wheeler or 4 wheeler. The roads thin out as you drive towards Butterfly Beach. The two wheelers can go a little further as compared to four wheelers and at one point of time you will have to park your vehicle and start walking. If you are on a four wheeler then I suggest you to take a boat ride instead of a long hike. The only downside of taking a boat ride is that you get just 30 to 40 minutes to explore the place. It should be sufficient for most people. If you are looking for a laid back time at Butterfly Beach then better choose hiking. The beach is small with rocks on either side and a white sandy beach in the middle. You can climb on the rocks to get a better view of the beach. There are no shops or eateries on this beach, so carry water and food accordingly, especially if you have decided to trek. Butterfly Beach used to be one of the most beautiful beaches, but not anymore. Due to over tourism, this place is filled with trash all around. Irresponsible tourists have littered the place and it has lost its charm. If you are visiting Butterfly Beach, Please make sure not to litter the place. Next to Butterfly Beach is Honeymoon Beach but it is not accessible by foot. The only option to reach it is by boat ride. 
If you're taking boat ride, then they will show you honeymoon beach from far, but they won't allow you to get down there. If you want to explore Goa beyond beaches, then you must visit Netravali Wildlife Sanctuary. It is around 30 km from Palolem and 44 km from Madgaon. Netravali is a protected forest range maintained by Goa Forest Department. This is strictly a no plastic zone, hence it is not allowed to carry single use plastic or alcohol inside the forest. There are two main attractions inside Netravali Sanctuary, Mainapi Waterfalls and Sauri Waterfalls. To reach Mainapi Waterfalls, you will have to do a long trek through dense forest. The trek distance is 4 km and it will take around 1 to 1 and a half hour. The waterfalls is surrounded by lush green forest and it looks stunning especially in monsoon. Since Mainapi demands long hike, very less people visit this place. If you are someone who likes less crowded places, then this would be the perfect place for you. There is a natural pool at the base of the waterfalls and it has shallow depth. Hence it's a perfect place if you want to get into the water. The next waterfalls is Sauri waterfalls. Reaching this falls is easier than Mainapi. It is just 1 km walk which would take less than 20 minutes. Since the hike is easier, it can get crowded during peak hours. The waterfalls is equally stunning and it is totally worth visiting Sauri waterfalls. The natural pool is deeper here, so it is advised to stay behind the safety points no matter whether you know swimming or not. There is a changing room facility also available, so if you are thinking to get into the water, then don't hesitate. Hats off to the forest department for not just opening up these attractions for tourists, but also maintaining them really well. If you are wondering whether it is safe to visit these places, then don't worry, it is completely safe. There are signboards everywhere and there will be security persons near the waterfalls as well. The only issue that we faced was there was no mobile network inside the forest range. Luckily, we had the offline maps downloaded. So if you are visiting Netravali, then don't forget to download offline maps. There are no restaurants or shops inside the forest, so do carry sufficient water and food. Apart from these two waterfalls, there are few smaller waterfalls like Baman Buddha waterfalls and Bupar waterfalls. If you have time and energy, then you can visit them on the way back. When visiting Netravali Wildlife Sanctuary, you must also include Bubbling Lake, also called the Budbud Lake, on your itinerary. If you are hearing it for the first time, the name of this place might feel strange and quite funny. Just to clarify one thing, even though it is called Bubbling Lake, technically it is not a lake. It's just a small pond, but a mysterious one. If you pay close attention to the water, you start noticing bubbles coming from the bottom of the pond. That's why it is named Bubbling Lake. The bubbles are formed at random location at random frequency. Some people say clapping or shouting increases the frequency of bubbles, but I found it has nothing to do with the sound, it's just random. Even though there are many scientific theories behind this phenomena, the exact reason why bubbles are formed still remains a mystery. You have to visit this place personally to experience this wonder. The water in the pond is very clean and you see a lot of small fishes in it. Next to this pond is a temple dedicated to Lord Gopinath. The place is surrounded by greenery and it is very calm and peaceful. Not many tourists visit this place, so it is a great spot if you are looking for an offbeat place to explore. Kabadirama Fort is a small fort surrounded by ocean on three sides. There are mainly three important spots inside the fort that are worth the visit. The first one is the Fort Viewpoint. From here, you can get an incredible view of the ocean. Next is St. Anthony's Chapel. This chapel is small yet beautiful. It is still used by locals for doing prayers. The last and the best part is the Pebble Beach. To reach Pebble Beach, you'll have to walk down for about 5 minutes. The trail is easy and needs almost no effort to reach the beach. This place is called Pebble Beach because there are thousands of pebbles here. The beach is not suitable for swimming, but the beauty of this place is incredible. Apart from these three spots, there is also a sea cave at this place. But to reach it, you will have to trek down for about 20 to 30 minutes. If you are someone who likes to explore sea caves, then definitely check it out. Galgibaga beach is probably the cleanest beach you will find in entire Goa. In fact, it is a very special beach because it is a nesting ground of sea turtles. Yes, that's why it is popularly known as Turtle Beach by the locals. These sea turtles are called Olive Ridley Turtles and they come to this beach to lay their eggs. 
the government has taken all the measures to protect the nesting grounds that's why you won't find any commercial activities on this beach there are no shacks no vehicles and no fishing on this beach hence galgi baga is super clean with white sandy beach and crystal clear water the nesting season will be usually in the month of jan and feb and the eggs hatch within 40 to 45 days so if you are visiting goa between jan to april then a visit to galgi baga is a must We visited Goa in the month of October which is not a nesting season still we totally fell in love with this place the calmness and beauty of Galgi Baga were to a whole new level not just Galgi Baga there are few more beaches like Morizim beach and Agonda beach that are also nesting sites of these sea turtles Palolim beach is a beautiful sandy beach with clear water and laid back atmosphere This beach has a lot of shacks and it is one of the busiest beaches in South Goa. There are many water sports activities you can do here among which kayaking and boating are the most popular ones. You can do kayaking in open ocean which is going to be a thrilling experience. I suggest you do kayaking in the evening so that you can watch the mesmerizing sunset while you are in the middle of the sea. The boats will usually take you on an hour ride and show you honeymoon beach, butterfly beach, turtle rock and dolphin sightseeing. Palolim is a great place for shopping too. There are so many shops near the beach. The prices are a bit expensive as compared to other places in Goa, but the collections were pretty good. Palolim has a lot of good cafes, restaurants and pubs. It is a great place to stay as well. It is a hotspot for many travelers and it is very convenient to reach other tourist attractions from this place. I have given the recommended stay options in Goa in the description box below. Do check it out after watching this video. If you're looking for some adventure then you should visit Dudsagar waterfalls. No doubt Dudsagar waterfalls is one of the most beautiful waterfalls in India. It is situated in Bhagwan Mahavir Wildlife Sanctuary. If you look at the map it is located close to the Karnataka and Goa border. There are two ways to reach Dudsagar waterfalls. The first is trekking along the railway track. This trek either starts from Castle Rock railway station or Kulam railway station. We had done this trek back in 2014 where we trekked from Castle Rock to Dudsagar waterfalls but this trek is banned now. I still see a lot of people doing this trek but I don't suggest you to try it. The second and the best method to reach Dudsagar waterfalls is by taking a jeep ride. You will get the jeeps from a place called Kulem around 36 km from Madgaon. Private vehicles are not allowed to enter the forest so you will have to park the vehicle here and buy the tickets for the jeep ride. The price of a single jeep is 3500 rupees which can accommodate up to 7 people. The exact price per head can vary depending on the number of people in the jeep. In addition to this, you will have to rent out a life jacket for 40 rupees and pay another 100 rupees as a forest entry charges. This off-road jeep ride is 10 km long and would take close to 30 minutes. You will have to walk another 20 minutes to finally reach the waterfalls. You get just 1 and 1/2 hour to enjoy the waterfalls including a trekking time. The moment you see the waterfalls you know it was worth the effort. The pool is quite deep here so make sure to wear life jacket at all times whether you know swimming or not. Since Dusagar is very famous it can get crowded during peak hours so I would suggest you to be here as early as possible. The best time to visit Dusagar is in monsoon and if you are visiting in rainy season make sure to wear shoes with good grip as the trail can be slippery. There are a lot of monkeys in this area so don't carry any food items when you are here. Before we talk about the last destination on our list, if this video is helpful, then hit on that like button. And if you are new to this channel, then please subscribe to Sakri Cubes. Back to the topic. Next we have Salolim Dam. If you are visiting Goa in the monsoon time, then a visit to Salolim Dam is a must. The speciality of this dam is the spillway. The overflow water goes through a U-shaped spillway. The view during this time would be mesmerizing. There is a similar dam in Karnataka also called Chikkaliwale Reservoir that also has a similar spillway design. There is a botanical garden and eco park next to this dam. So if you are coming with kids then they will enjoy it for sure. That was my list of top 10 places to visit in South Goa. Let me know which is your favorite in the comment section below. Goa is filled with hundreds of such hidden spots. If you know any such places that deserves to be on this list then do let me know in the comment section as well. If you are looking for places to visit in North Goa then do check this video on the left or if you are looking for other details about Goa then do check this video on the right.
See you in my next video. Until then, keep traveling.